Okay, now, all the helpers, let's bring some energy to the training. Let's do a final countdown. Then we start, okay? So okay. please read after me. Let's start. Our meeting will start in five seconds, everyone. Let's start with five, five, five four, 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 three, three, three two, 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 one. 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 Let's start. Now, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmaster of District 67, good evening. Now, welcome to today's Pathway Interactive Online Training. My name is Albert Wu. I will be your host of the whole training. Now, right after the final countdown, I'm going to give you more exciting sparkles of our training today. Today's training will mainly uh, consist of two important program of introduction. Number one, we call it a YLP program, Youth Leadership Program. And number two, we call it a speech craft program uh, by DTM Aaron Liam and one, the YLP by Mike Honda. Now a short reminder before our training today, let me remind you to turn off your camera and uh, mute your speaker to maintain the good quality of this training. Okay, so now I know you just can't wait. Uh, now to maintain a good quality, the Zoom master will help us to mute you if let anyone accidentally jump into this meeting room and create some background noise. Now, I know you just can't wait. I'm going to introduce you our first speaker today. Mike Honda, hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. 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 Mike Honda is the, in this year in our Dick 67. He's a club, gable club chair. Now you may wonder what is gable club? It probably to lots of people, it sounds unfamiliar. But that's our purpose here today. Mike is going to introduce us the YLP program. Now, the YLP program in Toastmasters has been designed to help students or young generations under 18. We help them from an intensive training or program to develop their basic skills in leadership and speaking ability. I personally have known Mike for many, many years ago from the contest occasion, contest, international contest. See, I. Mike is someone, he's a guy full of great passion. You, you are looking at Mike right now from his smiley face, always eager to, uh, <laughs> Mike, where are you? Yeah, I'm here. Always eager to extend, well, his willingness to help people. That's a great spirit. So now, I know we just can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and let's welcome our first speaker, Mike Honda. Albert, are you using my slides? Because it looks like exactly the same as mine. I think I'm done here. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> no. All right, all right. Just, just kidding. Anyways, uh, welcome, everybody. I appreciate having all of you here today. Uh, you know, I, I know you're going to learn a lot. And I hope you get inspired, inspired to take some action after today's session and build some excitement in your pathways journey. So let's get started. I'm going to put up a slide for you and then we will get started. Can you see my slide? Okay, good. Now, uh, welcome to our very first YLP Zoom online training session. For those of you who don't know what YLP is, it stands for the Youth Leadership Program. And uh, I'm sure that you're all going to learn something very interesting and very exciting. And I'm going to be your host, Mike Honda. So let's get started. So I'm just going to introduce a little bit about me again, just really quickly, and also my experience with the YLP. So like uh, Albert said, I'm currently the D67 YLP Gavel Club Chair. Now, for those of you who don't know what a Gavel Club is, a Gavel Club is basically a Toastmasters club like we have for adults, but it's for people under the age of 18 years old. 
So they follow the same system as we do. They have the same officers and same roles. It's just for people under the age of 18 years old. But today I'm not going to be touching on the Gavel Club. Uh, we're gonna be focusing just on the youth leadership program. The YLP program is not to be confused with the Gavel Club. YLP and Gavel Club are completely separate things. The YLP program is a short-term program while the Gavel Club is a long-term program. So for just for today, we're gonna focus on the YLP program. And you know, just with the YLP alone, there is so much stuff I have to tell you. I'm so excited to tell you so many things about the YLP. I just can't do it in 20 minutes. So today I'm just gonna run down the, the, what I call the nuts and bolts of the YLP program. And I'm hoping that later on, you guys are gonna ask me the great questions that I wanted to say anyways. But if you don't, you can always you know, message me later after the session's over and I can help you and support you. That's what I'm here for. And I'm hoping that you're gonna have a great experience, even better than what I had when you try the YLP program. All right, so yes, uh, I am the YLP Gavel Club Chair this year. I belong to three Toastmasters clubs, Taichung Toastmasters Club, Feng Yuan Toastmasters Club, and China Medical University Toastmasters Club. I was a club coach last year for China Medical. And so far, I've done the YLP program for two years, two years straight. And I've coached about five YLP groups. So I've had some experience with this program and I'd love to share what I went through and some tips that I can give you to help make this a better uh, experience for you. Uh, right now, currently we have one gavel club. We used to have two. Uh, the other one was at uh, the other school that I worked at called Hong Wen, Hong Wen Gavel Club, but that's also defunct now because I'm no longer there. We couldn't find a coordinator to take over. So at the moment, we have one gavel club in Taiwan, and it's at the place where I work. It's called the Wager Gavel Club. If you ever have a chance, you're always welcome to come and visit us and see what we do. We'd love to have guests. Uh, before I get started, I have to say, if Josh Myers, my friend, my best friend, and my coach, if you're listening, Josh Myers, very famous coach in Taiwan, it's all your fault. Why? Because... He lit the fire under me and created my coaching passion. You know, when I first started in Toastmasters, I just wanted to become a better speaker and get rid of my nervousness. But since Josh has coached me for the past three years, all the things that he taught me, I learned and I felt like it was so valuable. I wanted to give it back to others as well because Josh and I, we both learned a lot. And I felt like I wanted to give it back to somebody. So I actually didn't know who to give it to, but one day I was just Googling through and finding out who I can share the experience that I got as a coachee and share it with somebody. And then I finally just stumbled upon this website that said Toastmasters has a YLP program. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. I never thought about coaching kids. So I looked into it and I tried it. And this is how my journey began the coaching passion came from another Toastmaster. So when you start coaching others, hopefully that passion gets passed down to other people that you coached. So this is how I got started with the YLP program two years ago. So what is the YLP program? Well, YLP, like I said, it's called the Youth Leadership Program. And it is not a club, it's a workshop. And this workshop is designed for children under the age of 18 years old. And the reason why it's a, it's a workshop because it's a short-term program. And what I mean by short-term program, it could be anywhere between eight weeks to a year. But at some point, the program has to stop. It doesn't keep going on like a regular Toastmasters club. So it's a short-term program. Now, uh, are there any materials provided? Yes, actually, when you start the YLP program, there's going to be two booklets. One is for the student. It's on the right-hand side of the screen. It's called the Youth Leadership Program Workbook. Every student has to have one of these books because it is something for the student to look inside, read, and 
develop some skills and write things inside the booklet. So they have to complete the booklet. This booklet is about 60 NT dollars. It's not a lot. The coordinator of the program, which will be you if you start a YLP program, they also have a book. It's called the Coordinator's Guide. That's about 160 NT dollars. Now, if you were to buy this in a package, it comes with five workbooks and one coordinator's booklet, along with some certificates, and that costs about 500 NT dollars. Now, what's in the workshop? Well, if you look at the booklet inside, you will see that there are eight sessions. Each session is meant to be one to two hours long per session. This is just a guide. You don't have to make it one to two hours per session, but I did find that the one to two hour sessions are great. For the older kids, kids who are in junior high school, senior high school, two hour sessions work great for each session. Uh, for the younger kids, maybe kids who are in elementary school, one hour sessions work great. I don't recommend going over that because with young kids, their attention spans can go only so far, if you know what I mean. If you're a teacher, you know what I mean. But it doesn't have to be this long. It could be longer than this. It's totally up to you, but it depends on also how many students you have in your group. If it's a larger group, it might take longer. If it's a smaller group, it might take a little bit shorter. So one to two hour sessions are the guide. In there, there are eight sessions and each session focuses on specific skills. The whole purpose of this program is to do Three, uh, two things actually. The first one is to help develop leadership skills within the students. A lot of times the students nowadays, they don't know how to become a leader. They don't know how to lead. So that's the first thing that they do. And actually in session one, where it says introduction to chairmanship, this is where they appoint officers and they elect the officers that they want for the, for the program. Now, they don't have all the roles like they do in the Toastmasters clubs. They only have a few op uh, officers. They have a president, a vice president, a secretary, and an SAA. Now, if you want to add more officers to your program, you can. But at least you have to have those four roles because these four roles learn to help the students to develop leadership skills, whatever roles they play. In the, book, in the booklet, you will see that they would like one student to be, say, the president for the whole eight sessions. Uh, what I did was I elected a president, vice president, secretary, SAA. Every week, I chose a different student so that they all got to try different roles and learn how to be leaders within their prospective roles. So you can mix and match it as long as you go through the roles and learn to teach the children how to develop these leadership skills. The other uh, objective that this booklet will teach your students is to learn how to develop confidence. This program is all about helping the kids develop their own confidence. When they develop their own confidence, it's through public speaking. A lot of the students that you get or will get will be students who have never spoken in front of any group at all so they're coming in with no skills at all so we are not trying to make them amazing speakers but we're trying to get them to improve see the measurable results in their leadership skills and their confidence and their public speaking if they have improved after eight sessions in these areas it's a great job that's what the whole objective of this program is to do Session two is introducting to public speaking, and that's basically getting the students to understand how to do an icebreaker. So that's an icebreaker session. Session three is impromptu speaking. This is where they learn the skill of table topics. It's basically table topics. So they're learning how to do table topics properly, learning how to think on their feet. So that's session three. Session four is organizing your speech. So once your students have already done their icebreaker and they've already made a speech, this is where they actually start focusing on the speech and learning how to make it better. Maybe having a proper uh, introduction, the body with three examples and a conclusion, their action call, 
So these are all things that they learn how to improve on their speeches. Now, if you go to session five, this is a listening section. And this skill is to have students understand and learn how to be a better evaluator. The students later on will start to realize that getting evaluations are extremely important for them to become better speakers. So the evaluations and the speaking go hand in hand. They start to realize this as they go on through the program. So listening is all about improving themselves as an evaluator. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that every session has an evaluation session. You as a coordinator do not do all of the evaluations for your students. Eventually what you wanna do is you wanna to try to get your students to evaluate each other. They have to learn to appreciate getting evaluations from their peers, from their colleagues, from fellow students, and not just always from the coordinator. So this, this is very important. They learn to appreciate helping each other. And this is also where teamwork comes into play. Session six is gestures in speaking. So this is where if they didn't have effective body language in the beginning of their speeches, this is where they start learning how to develop good stage movement. What kind of body language to use? What kind of eye contact? When to use it? How to use it? So they develop this and incorporate it into the speech. Session seven is all about voice, vocal variety, how to add it, when to add it, and using effective words as vocabulary. So maybe they have to change words that they ended up not being that great. They have to use more effective words in their speeches. So that's session seven. By the time they get to session eight, this is where they get to actually show off their skills and finally show people how much their speech has improved. So this is where you can have a graduation ceremony. You can have uh, other colleagues come and invite them. You can invite parents. You can invite other Toastmasters and allow them to show off their skills as a public speaker. So that's session eight. This is where you actually get to help the students celebrate their growth and their improvement. So there's eight sessions in the booklet. They're all focused on specific skills. Now, what is the goal of Wild Team? Well, the first one is to develop communication and leadership skills. That's the first thing they learn before they do any speeches. Next, they learn to evaluate. Evaluation is so important. And I can't tell you how many times the students have started to realize that learning how to evaluate is a very important skill. Give speeches. This is where the students actually learn how to appreciate their speeches, how to make it better. And they realize that their speeches not always stay the same, but it learns to evolve. Develop impromptu skills, table topics. Students you'll find are reasonably actually quite good at table topics because they're actually good at quite making up things on a whim. So this is where they actually get to use it, use the skills and develop it into something better. And also develop stage presence. A lot of the students are not comfortable standing in front of a stage and looking at an audience. So this is where they learn to develop their confidence and speak out. One thing I have to keep in mind is that you'll see uh, if you talk to a lot of other YLP groups around the world, they don't often follow some of the specific rules that are in the YLP program. You have to make sure that when the students do the speeches should be four to five minutes long. For the table topics, impromptu speaking should be at least one to two minutes. So those are some tips that I need to give you. Now, should I make it interesting while using the booklet? I found that if you just go through the booklet and do nothing else, it's absolutely fine. But you will find that sometimes the students feel challenged, that they need more structure, they need more foundation when you're working on certain skills. So this is what I found that I needed to do when I did my YLP program. This is not something that you have to do, but you can also add it into your YLP program to make it more fulfilling for your students, to make it more enriching for them. So you can always add things as long as you don't take anything out of the YLP program policy. So absolutely, yes. I'll give you some suggestions here. First one is 
if you're going to teach them impromptu skills, don't just get them to do impromptu speaking. They're, they're probably not going to be able to do well if you just tell them to stand up and start doing impromptu. So you might want to work on having impromptu speaking games. There's a lot of books out there. I also have a book that I can share with you if anybody would like to try them. These are all for children. These are all games specifically geared to helping students understand how to develop impromptu skills. So there's a lot of games. You have to use a lot of games because when you don't use games, the students, they just tune out. So you have to keep it interesting. So when you want them to learn specific skills, try to use as many games as you can. Impromptu games, improv games are just one of them. So that's one thing you can do to add to your YLP program. These are all things that I did that you, you don't have to do, but I felt that it was better and it worked really well for me. Another thing you can do is incorporate field trips. Like for example, when Sherry Sue, when she, she came second in the world stage, she came to visit Taiwan. I went and brought some students over from my YLP program, went to see her workshop in Taichung. And that was a great experience for them to actually see a, a champion, a world champion come to Taichung and see her face to face and listen to her workshop. So this is something that you can do as well. Incorporate field trips where they can actually learn something from another Toastmaster. Another thing you can do is go and have workshops. When I was teaching my YLP program at the junior high school, we got invited to China Trust Toastmasters Club in uh, Taipei. I went up there to do a workshop on teaching the younger generation. I brought three of my YLP program students and they did speeches. They shared their experience about what they learned from the YLP program and give them an opportunity to see other Toastmasters face to face and speak in front of a crowd. This is all beneficial, not just for you as the coordinator, but for the students as well, because that also helps them build tremendous confidence. So this is something that I totally recommend. Go and visit other clubs if you have a chance with your YLP groups or visit them to come to your school. Now, this is something that I would very, very totally recommend. When you do the YLP program and you do these eight sessions, between the sessions, please try to have breakout sessions. This is not something that is said in the YLP program booklet, but I highly recommend it. Breakout sessions are when you get the students to break, split up into groups. It could be a group of three, a group of four, even pair up with another student. Like you see in the PowerPoint, you see students who are doing their speeches and we have evaluators. The students are the evaluators. The students are the speakers and they share with each other and they switch roles. They have breakout sessions. When they wanna learn how to become better evaluators, we, we have breakout sessions where the students help each other and give suggestions on how to become a better evaluator. We develop and build skills together. So the coordinator is not the only one doing all the work and teaching. We are also guiding them, to, but the, we allow the students to gain the experience that they gain and share it with other students and have these little breakout sessions so the students can help each other. It's very, very, very valuable in the growth of your students in the YLP program. So if I can suggest anything, have breakout sessions. Take the time to stop, slow down, and have the kids learn how to work different skills out on their own. And be the coordinator. Co coordinator doesn't mean you're telling the students what to do, but you're guiding them in the right direction. So breakout sessions, highly recommend that. Invite guest speakers. I've done that many times. Simone has come to be uh, a guest speaker as well. Gauri Shishadri from Region 14 have, has also come to be a guest speaker. When you invite guest speakers to come and visit your YLP group, that's considered a breakout session as well. The students, sometimes they are in awe of seeing real Toastmasters wow, these are what Toastmasters look like? They actually really tune into what the, the, the Toastmasters people are saying because they've never seen a Toastmaster person before. And they really soak up all the lessons that they get from this guest speaker that comes to your school. So I highly, I highly recommend inviting guest speakers. This is something that will enrich their learning through the YLP program. Again, you don't have to do these things, but I found that 
doing these things from time to time helps your students stay motivated, encouraged, inspired, and want to continue learning. Now, the last thing is, whatever you do, whenever you have the opportunity, celebrate every moment. These are students we're talking about, and students operate differently than us. We need to keep continuing to encourage them. Every little milestone for them is a, break, is a huge, huge breakthrough. So when they actually develop a skill, or they've learned something, or they've overcome something, always find time to celebrate it publicly. I always give out certificates at the end of every session, or gifts, or just an applause. You know, students, they feed off public praise. And then whenever you have a chance to applaud them, encourage them, inspire them, do it because that continues to keep them going. So every moment you have, every chance you have, try that. That really helps a lot. Now, at the end of the YLP program, session eight, they will have completed the program. They will get a certificate from Toastmasters International. This certificate comes with the booklet and the package that you receive from Toastmasters International. This is the only certificate they get. So if you want to give out other certificates like I did for every session or for every speech, you're most welcome to, it works even better. But this is the official one from Toastmasters International and you can have it signed and dated. Now, why should you do this? Are you crazy? Sometimes you'll get that. People will say, that sounds like so much work. Why are you doing it? Well, for me, I can only share, you, share with you what my experience has been. For the past two years I've been doing this program, I have to tell you, it has helped me to grow, not just as a Toastmaster, but in my personal life and as a coach. I became an even better coach because I did this YLP program. The students, I learned so much from them. They inspired me so much. They shared so many things with me to make me become a better coach. And that's one reason why you should do it. Because if only the students are learning and you are not you're doing something wrong, you as a coach also have to learn something and you will learn so much from being around these kids. Also, you will develop a special bond with students. And that's the greatest thing, is to be able to understand where they're coming from, how they feel, what do they need, what are their needs, how can I help them? And they also help you in return. That's a great, great thing you can't get with money. And also, one more important thing is YLP. If you do this program, it's an elective to earn through your Pathways DTM. So if you do this, you can get your Pathways DTM. So I want to show you this chart. Uh, if you look on the left-hand side, these are through Pathways, these are all the required things you have to do. you got two Pathways you have to do. You have to serve one year as a club officer, one year as a district officer. These are things that we all have to do. Now, if you look on the right-hand side, you see the uh, red boxes. Look at the top. You have to do two electives. So the first one is you have to be a club mentor or a club coach. You gotta choose one of those. And the other elective you have to do is, you have to choose the YLP program, speech craft, which Aaron will do later, or club sponsor. So YLP program is one of the electives you have to choose to get your DTM through Pathways. If you have finished all that, then you work on your final DTM project and you're there. Congratulations. Pathways to DTM. These are some things that I'd like to share with you that uh, you can't get on the website through TI. Only the YLP coordinator can receive the Pathways elective for credit. So if you have four people helping one YLP group, only one person can get the credit. So one person has to be the coordinator for that group. If you have four or five other people training and helping the students, but only remember, only one person can get the credit. So that's something very important to, to note. If you have five people, not all five people can get the credit, only one person. 
you must have a minimum of three students to start the YLP program. These are all latest information that I got from communicating with Toastmasters International. It's not on the website, it's not in the booklet, unfortunately, but this is all updated information I got. So you have to have at least three students in your YLP program to enroll and start. Now, the coordinator does not have to be a Toastmaster. So this program can be taught by a non-Toastmaster. However, if that person is a coordinator and they are not a Toastmasters member, you cannot receive your credit. You won't get credit for it. But if you are a Toastmaster and you are the coordinator, you will receive credit for it. But this is one thing you have to know, that if you're not a Toastmaster, it could be a teacher, it could be a parent, it could be uh, somebody outside, they can also be a coordinator for the Toastmasters Youth Leadership Program. Last thing, I highly recommend that the coordinator is a Toastmasters member. Remember, not only because you will receive credit for it, but because if you're a Toastmaster, you will understand better how to help these children because there are certain elements that you get from being at the Toastmasters club where you will have to implement that in your YLP program. So it does help to become or be a Toastmasters member to do this program. The last thing I want to say is this, before we move on. You know, lately, I've been looking at all the things that are happening around the world. And, you know, all these professionals, all these adults in the world, we're all fighting. We can't, we can't even learn to communicate with each other anymore. Everybody's fighting. And so I realized one thing is the YLP program, it's so valuable. It's so valuable because we are learning how to communicate. We're learning how to lead. We're learning how to understand each other and not fight. And I realized the YLP program is so important because you're bringing this to the younger generation. And can you imagine when some of the younger generation learn the skills that we have now, hopefully we'll have a better generation when they grow up. And this is the whole purpose of the YLP program. And you can be a part of this exciting program. You can be one of the people that proudly says, yes, I was a part of this program and I made a difference. So go out there, try it. I'll be here to support you. Hope you have fun. Hope you have a valuable experience. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mike, for your wonderful introduction of the YLP program. You bet. Really thankful for that. I'd like to quote one of the sentence. I think it's the greatest thing for District 67 to have someone like you with passionate heart and willingness to help people. I think after your explanation today, we have like 80 to 90% of understanding of YLP. Well, the next 10 to 20%, I'd like to encourage everyone to join Mike in this YLP program to help more people. So if you agree with me, let's give all give a thumb up icon or you can feel free to type uh, an encouragement to Mike. Thank you for your effort today, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Now, it comes with a Q&A session. We have about seven minutes to do this session. So uh, for the, all the attendants, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay. Now, now I'm, I'm looking at the first one is from, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, the question from uh, Jenny, would this program need to be sponsored by the Toastmaster Club? Would this program need to be sponsored by a Toastmaster Club? Mike? Yes, if you're a Toastmasters member, it's always good to have sponsoring from a Toastmasters Club because what if, if you're not, if you're not in Toastmasters, then you don't really need a sp sponsoring club. But if you're in Toastmasters, yes, you do. And it's advisable that you do have a sponsoring club because that club and the members in that club will help support the students that are in the YLP program. For example, maybe you need some funding for the books. Maybe you need some funding for materials or gifts or prizes or certificates. Your sponsoring club 
can help you deal with some of the finances that you need. And also if you need guest speakers, if you need any supplies or materials or any kind of logistical uh, information, or you need Toastmasters members to attend and help, they'll be there for you. So it becomes a very invaluable tool to have. So yes, it's very, it's highly recommendable that you do have a sponsoring club. Yeah, thank you. And I, I think in a, another way that once we work with the school and the Toastmaster Club, we provide more chance to our members, experienced members to practice in this YLP program. And the second question from Jackie is, YLP only can do in a school or we can do it in a community for the students, oh, absolutely, the younger Yeah, generations. absolutely not. It's not just for schools. I just happen to work in a school. That's why uh, this arrangement works well for me, but definitely not just for schools. You can just gather some kids in a neighborhood, just grab them and say, hey, let's do some YLP. Uh, it could be a group of parents who want to get their kids together. It could be in a community center where kids gather. It could be anywhere and for any students, as long as they're under the age of 18 years old and they want to do this program. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question from uh, Zhong Li Club, Kiara, is how do we get YLP materials from Toastmaster International more effectively because it's a very practical question because it's difficult yeah, it, sometimes to if we bought it online from the international website yeah it's a very good question for the past two years i look i've done five yp groups so i've had to order uh, a couple of times but what i can tell you is this right now the d67 shop does not have these books in stock so i have recommended for the future that somehow we have these books stocked in the shop so that if future members need them they can just get them right away. But from my experience so far, uh, there's only two ways to do it. You can personally order them online through Toastmasters International. But the problem with that is that you will have to pay for shipping and it can cost quite a bit, but you'll get your shipping quite quickly. Now, if you're willing to wait a little bit, you can go to the D67 shop and order it through them. The downside is you may have to wait a month, couple of months to get it but the shipping will be much cheaper. So that's the, that's the upside. So this is where we stand right now, but those are the only two options you have. Order through Toastmasters International or order through D67 Shop, but there's ups and downs for both. But keep in mind, the workbook is about 60 NT dollars each. The coordinator's guide is about 150 NT. But if you order these books, I highly recommend you don't just order one order the package. The package comes with one coordinator's guide, five certificates, a stack of evaluation sheets, and five student booklets. That's the way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And one last question before we move on to the next session. Uh, this is from Barbara. Are the YLP manuals available in languages other than English, like Chinese? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Right now, at the moment, there is only one language available and that's English. So hopefully maybe in the future we will have Chinese. That's a, that's a really good question. Maybe we can have it in other languages, but at the moment uh, it's only in English. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mike. That's all wrap up our Q and A session. And I believe there are lots of questions coming in. I probably will prepare a list to Mike and Mike will explain and answer probably in our Facebook. Uh, thank you, Mike. I'd like to give you my highest salute to you because you're the great leaders in our society to help more people. And let's join this YLP program. And thank you everyone for your attention. Now quickly, let's move on to our next session. Another keynote speech here today. The next speaker, I'm going to uh, introduce you. It's like someone you all know who he is, really. Uh, his name is Aaron Liang, and he's become more famous recently, especially from the past half year of COVID-19. And he helped us, our district, in many, many different like online contests. And he's a great master on this online meeting of Toastmasters. And he has helped Toastmasters smooth the transition from the, our real meeting to the virtual meeting, Toastmasters. So his speech today is about one of the special program 
in Toastmasters, called it Speechcraft. Now this, craft, this program has been designed to help Toastmasters members or non-Toastmasters members. We learn the basic skills of public speaking. So without further ado, please join me in welcome. Our VIP speaker, I would say. Hi, Aaron. That's Hi. Welcome. Let's welcome Aaron Liang. Thank you very much, though, for, for your introduction. Really appreciate it. Um, dear District 67, uh, this is me. Uh, my name is Aaron, uh, currently District uh, 67 Speechcraft Coordinator. Now, I love the part whereby Albert has done a really good job of keeping everything there. Like, one page is, like, sufficient for me to, like, okay, I can run away as well, just like Mike. But really great job by Albert uh, for giving a one-page slide. So, give a round of applause for Albert for making a very nice layout. Okay, so my session will be slightly different. I would like to see loads of different faces. Please really switch on your webcams. Really love the interaction so I can really see your lovely smiles. That would definitely boost my workshop efficiency too, or effectiveness. Please do uh, uh, switch on your webcams. Great, appreciate it. So now uh, I would like to have uh, Richard to, to unshare the screen so I can share my screen if possible. Thank you very much on that. So today, uh, welcome to a session of the Speechcraft. So for just type in the chat box. Now for those of you who knows about Speechcraft, please type in the chat box one. And for those of you who do not know about Speechcraft, or, uh, I don't really know much about it, type number two. So I can actually gauge about the audience uh, understanding of this workshop itself. Well, there are loads of twos. That's making my purpose even more important. Just kidding. I need to leave up to Mike Standard after he delivered a very excellent workshop now. <laughs> so I see quite a number of people who have uh, type number two. So don't worry, you are in the right place to know more about the Speechcraft and how you can be part of it. Because to me, Speechcraft is like an amazing to like a miracle herbal medicine that can save all lives. But I will explain more in depth later on. So this is a bit of bio about myself. Uh, I tried to summarize myself in a, a, in a very short way. So this year, really appreciate District 67 for giving me the opportunity to lead this uh, speech craft. And also uh, currently I'm in District 89, 118, and also bounced around in different places around the world. Uh, also founder of online attendance community, so you can actually connect to different clubs as long as you find a club that really is interesting, bring your whole club over and find them, it's still fine. And one of the most uh, amazing element that is in play, even though COVID-19 is still around, uh, is that I managed to still become a Switchcraft coordinator in nine different countries. Uh, and one of them actually has a prison. So it's, it's really amazing how Speechcraft can enter in all walks of life. It's not just for clubs, it's also for any walks of life too. So any of these problems that sounds very familiar to you, common problems that we see in Toastmaster clubs. We have lots of lacks of gas, uh, no evaluators, finding people are very hard, no timers sometimes. The new members are like, I don't know where I'm going. Or even you can find that the officers and the members are lacking in the club chemistry. People don't really come and go at the same time. And building the leaders are, are kind of hard to groom. So when you see this kind of common issues in most of the Toastmasters globally, you'd be wondering what kind of solutions that you can look forward to. For me, I just want a club that gives me excellence, give me a high quality that makes me feel like a home. Do you want that? If you really want that, please type the word yes in the chat box. If you don't want it, you can type no. I, I will still accept that as an answer. Do you want to have a club that really deliver excellence? I see a lot of response there. If you want to bring that, yes, please be part of the Speechcraft session and also lead in one of the Speechcraft uh, as a coordinator. So in a nutshell for Speechcraft, Speechcraft is like a miracle medicine, as I mentioned before. It works in all, all sorts of ways that provides districts with lots of different supports. Now, currently in this year, due to COVID-19 and due to new restructuring in uh, Toastmasters International, we have the Pathways program. Now in the Pathways program itself, we, are, we need to do it now. 
technically speaking, because they are no longer accepting the previous programs, uh, except that if you're applying for ALS or DTM, that's still fine. But if you're going through pathways, this is the only way to go in education. And Speechcraft can be a good start to help you familiarize with pathways. It also helps new members. Now I'm going to break it down into seeing all this different clubs around the world. Speechcraft has been globally connecting members, workshop speakers, giving lots of different opportunities. Now, Speechcraft builds the whole district up together. It helps from not just supporting pathways, it also does help struggling clubs as long as you have a club that's maybe like less than 12 members, you can have a Speechcraft coordinator that helps you to build up your membership. It also helps to grind the basic skills of public speaking to your new members so that they can be fully aware of what the challenges are ahead of them. Now it helps different types of clubs too. It helps in university clubs, schools, it also helps in communities, corporate clubs, or if you are very enthusiastic to want to charge a new club, you can also start a new club. This is only a reference that I see leadership, uh, leaders worldwide Speechcraft. They are actually recruiting members around the world just being part of the club. Speechcraft can also help to build your membership in some way or the other. Now I'm going to break it down for who is it for. Now Speechcraft program itself, it actually focuses for non-members, okay? But the thing is that it doesn't stop there. What do you mean by non-members? If I want to organize a speech craft in my club itself, I can welcome guests. Are the guests interested for a speech craft program? They can be part of it on a small cost. I will explain a bit on the cost part because speech craft program itself, you can charge money. Uh, you can charge money and then basically that those members can be part of your members if the money that you have collected can be converted into membership fees. It usually lasts for four, six or eight sessions around the range of two months. It's like an intensive speech program for your club. Now, one question that comes usually in mind is that, does it mean that I have to replace my current meetings with Speechcraft? Not necessary. You can think about it like a night tutorial class. You can have your main meetings, your main club meetings in one time. Like maybe let's say, for example, you're holding a meeting on Tuesday. Now, next thing is that you want to have a speech craft, you can have, hold it on a weekend so that for members to practice their skills. Some members might be very timid to present in the official Toastmaster meetings, but if you give them this chance of practicing it with good guidance in speech craft program, they might be more inclined to try out their first. With more practice gives confidence and speech craft is definitely there to give confidence to lots of different members. Now, not just new members itself, it also helps to develop new clubs. If you're interested to find new clubs, you're looking for club sponsors, club mentors, Speechcraft is also an incentive to find a place that is like, I'm interested to learn public speaking. Speechcraft will be a good way to go to recruit your 20 members. Now, this is a Speechcraft starter kit. Uh, as I mentioned, it actually costs some money. And I will actually will talk with Doris and Lisa, and see whether there's any budget that's rele released for that. But in case it doesn't have any budget, we will still have alternative means because uh, I do have my Speechcraft manuals here. So I can also share uh, my copies as well so that you can have some guidance along with it. Now, every Speechcraft itself, if you order it, you have three key things. You have Speechcraft materials, just like YLP, just like Gavel Clubs. You still have some sort of starter kits. Now, the starter kits are like this. You have a coordinator guide a manual. You also have a Speechcraft workshop that is for your members who are attending it. And finally, you have a group of people. This group of people on your right hand side are usually the club officers of the club. If you're having a Speechcraft within your club, those are usually your club officers. They will act as your mentor. They will act as your advisor. They will act as your guide it gives a nice opportunity for them to build a nice connection with the members if they are not close to there in the regular meetings. It gives them more insights that one-to-one -one coaching sessions too. Now with this three materials in mind, does it mean that it's, it's just that? No, Speechcraft actually has more to offer. You can use the Speechcraft coordination expat. You can welcome global speakers like 
just now, I'm, as I showed you one of the posters, you can invite Margaret Preach, you can invite different well-renowned speakers like Aaron Bravely, et cetera, built on that. You can welcome any workshop speakers, even in District 67 too. It gives you an opportunity to reach out and reach far. Now, these are sample items of what will you will expect in a speech craft, like a rundown. Now, we have some openings. Uh, openings meaning just like there's like a regular meeting you need to have a TME Toastmaster of the evening or Toastmaster of the day you also need to have a host in the speech craft session you can invite workshop speakers every single speech craft itself has a workshop I repeat every speech craft has a workshop within it the reason why is very simple you want to have as much support as possible and this workshop speakers can be renowned like Mike himself, right? You can invite Mike over here through online and help you with the speech craft or invite other speakers, district leaders to be part of the workshop speakers. This gives you an opportunity to learn from the best of the best in your district. It's just like if you look downwards, it's like, well, it looks like a regular meeting. Yes, it is, but it's a slightly different format. Because if you notice on the workshop speech itself, it actually focus on the elements in play, level one and level three. Now, why do I actually put level one and level three over here? It's because if you look at level one and level three, they are very similar to the previous traditional program with the common speeches such as icebreaker, evaluations, etc. It builds up the base of vocal variety, body language, things that you will expect in any Toastmaster speech in your journey. So in level one and level three are usually common workshop themes that the workshop speakers can start from. Like how do you do research? How do you present it effectively? This three things, it helps so much to coordinate with pathways. It's not just that, it also helps you to build your confidence from within because you get to practice this unlimitedly as long as it's within the eight, eight speeches, right? Eight sessions, right? Now, don't worry about being blown off in this session because this is like a tutorial class. A tutorial class meaning that you will not be presenting like a regular meeting, the regular meeting whereby you go up the stage, you get a personality evaluator. Same thing, yes, but you might fear because it's like an open performance. But for this one, Swishcraft, it's known to welcome failures. It gives you more opportunity to try out all different styles of public speaking techniques that you may come across, practice it here. You have one-to-one -one coachings with your speech craft coordinator, advisors, XCOMs, etc. Now, there's one thing different uh, in this speech craft session compared to the regular meetings is that we usually do have speech craft assignments, but this speech craft assignments, we actually will demonstrate to you later on in the live demo. What is it like? We have one more additional segment called the goal setting. It helps you to execute the plans that you want to have with your evaluator. Now that's quite different from a regular meeting whereby the evaluator finishes and then voila, they can walk away. Now, this is not the case here. You have to have an action plan with the evaluator and the evaluator will see you through that action plan. I will show you a demonstrator later on. Now, finally, announcements of the next meeting, role takings, etc., and then adjournment. So this is like the regular meeting, but it's more, I would say, practical in, a, in one way. Usually the roles are in the speech craft will be coordinators, workshop speakers, mentors, projects, and advisors. Advisors can be from our team. We can actually give you advice on how you can lead speech craft. You can record it, send it to us. We actually help you evaluate the whole session together and how you can improve from leading every session. This part is about charging. Uh, some, some members will be thinking about, oh, Speechcraft has to cost $20. So where, where is the budget from? You can also charge the guests uh, on the money itself. Uh, you can 
the money is only applicable to covering material costs, printing, advertisement, refreshments, or alternatively, if you want to recruit them as a member, potential member, you can actually say, tell them, say, look, if you join Speechcraft and you think it's good enough, you want to be part of us, we will convert the money that you paid to be part of the membership base. That way, you also helps to build your membership base. One solution for all. Now, why do you need or what's the benefit of joining Speechcraft? It looks like it's like a regular intensive cost, but for you, you're like leading a mini HPL, like a high performance version. You have lots of opportunities within Speechcraft that you can design the whole agenda. It's different from VPE role, like Vice President of Education in a regular meeting, whereby you design an agenda and you have to owe the duty to that. Now, this one has more creativity. You can design in different ways as long as the core materials are there, such as some table topic speeches for members to try it out or guests to try it out, workshop that can be designated to focus on specific targets, or if you notice some members are very weak in evaluation, add one more evaluation session, mix and match, increase the eff effectiveness and efficiency based on the result findings of every single speech craft session. Usually we do, after the meeting itself, we will, we will ask for feedback to say, what do you want to expect for your future speech craft sections? You can keep on asking. When there's feedbacks, you can adjust accordingly. It's not a fixed program, it's a flexible one. You can mix and match, customize it, and make it very brilliant out there. And now, obviously, to me, I always think that talking is just halfway to go. I rather want to show you the real stuff. When you show the real stuff, you will get the entire picture of how it goes. So today I have three amazing supporters, uh, rather say volunteers who really helped me to deliver this live demo. We have Albert as the host. We also have our demo speaker, who I will, re I will let Albert to review her secretly, no skin. And we also have our evaluator, Jimmy, that will be doing the live demos. Now, now this is part whereby I'm going to show you how the live demo works. I'm going to stop sharing. Now I still see a lot of empty. Oh, I see some cameras now. So first part of the demo itself is that the host will introduce about the workshop. Okay, that will be a workshop every time, as I mentioned. So workshop can be any topic. I can talk about how do you do table topics, how do you do evaluations, how do you do etc. So workshops first always a kick invite the best workshop speakers that you can think about come by and then next part albert please lead the tick session okay thank you aaron for your workshop training ladies and gentlemen welcome to the live workshop demo of speech speechcraft today we have great great privilege to invite the most beautiful a young elegant lady Lara is from my home club. I find her with great passion uh, in the speeches. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcome our demo speech speaker here today, Lara Wang. Please put your hands together or give her a thumb up. Let's welcome Lara. To live in a better world we can help. When talk about global issues, what is the first idea coming to your mind? Yes, COVID-19, what else? My answer is environment protection. Wave your hands if you do bring your chopsticks, spoon or fork when going out. I have the whole set and even the stores. This is one of my ways to help the world. My dear Toastmasters, environment protection is an important issue for decades, but we just leave it later. The issue is too big, while all we can do is limited. I choose to start from myself. I know I can help. 
In order to reduce the waste, I never buy drinks actively. Even getting a cup of it from convenience stores or on the street is easy. I always carry a bottle of water with me. Not to mention like I have my own cutlery set. And my next step is to bring multiple containers when visiting night market or just standing out. Won't it be too troublesome? It just a little. I would like to do late rather than creating the garbage. Reduce and classify the garbage. Bring your own shopping bags and say no to the plastic one. I can do it. You can do it as well. However, there's one thing you might not do in this way. When seeing a motorcyclist throwing a cigarette butt on the road, what would you do? I pick it out and head to him. Show the dash can on my helmet and give him a sincere smile. Excuse me, sir. Uh, is this yours? Yes, just do it. Everyone is welcome to join me to be an environment protector. Mm, there are too many examples I can share. Let me narrow down the scope and talk about one thing only, the shampoo soap. Three years ago, I glanced the videos on the internet regarding this issue. A bottle of shampoo can be used for three months under normal condition, simply out. A person will abandon 200 bottles in just 50 years. This calculation has not including the body wash and the conditioner yet. Whether this bottle can be recycled or not is another topic. Moreover, have you ever noticed the ratio of the cleaning ingredients and water is only four to six? Most capacity is for water. Why don't we just buy the cleaning ingredients only? After watching this video, I was deeply shocked. The more common, the easier we ignore. I began to pay more attention on the relevant intelligence in my daily life. One day, I glanced the shampoo soap on the market, which was also packaged in the recyclable paper. Wow, how friendly it is to our world. I brought five at once. They won't occupy the space and very easy to use. After getting hair weight, just brush it with the soap from the zoot to the end about twice or three times. You can start rubbing the bubbles. Because there's no foaming agent added, the fragrance will not so strong. However, the friction after trying this will tell you how good it is. Mm, a few weeks ago, two tough master. Nan Yu and Kiera approach me and ask, Lara, how to get the soap? That's a great idea to reduce the plastic bottles. I wanna try one pack. Two pack here as well, thank you. <laughs> I was so touched. Both of them were infused by my speech. We are doing our part to help the world. To save our world, everyone can help. Reduce the waste, reuse the containers, and say no to the plastic ones. Let's get on it. To live in a better world, we can help. Toastmasters.
Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for your wonderful speech. Yes, we can help and we can help the world. Thank you. It's a wonderful speech. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we have it for real. Now we've invited an evaluator to give Lara the immediate feedback toward her presentation. Now the evaluator is also a very good friend of mine. His name is Jimmy Hussein. He's a well experienced Toastmasters and he's a, also an international student here in Taoyuan. So Jimmy, you ready for the evaluation? Okay, once okay. again, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands <laughs> together and give a thumb up to Jimmy and welcome our a uh, demo evaluation, Jimmy Hussein. Thank you, thank you, Albert, for the opportunity and also hold the committee in the speech club uh, session today. Lara Wang, wow, this is very great opportunity for me to be your evaluator because not only you show me how your patient in speaking in front of the public, especially in the Toastmasters context. So I noticed that you bring a very credential, very crucial issue that we as a human, as a Toastmasters also need to consider about, which is environmental issue. And for this time, you chose your topic very well, and it's very good as a Toastmasters, we practice to choose our topic very well. And also I noticed that you bring all of the equipment with you and to show us your camera, your straw, and so on, and also your soap or anything that you you said very related to the issue that you concern about. So it's very good for you and for us as an example how we do the speech. And also, I like how you started your speech. You start by asking a question to the audience and what is the global issue right now, we think very much. Of course, you acknowledge about the COVID-19, but also you ask the audience to pay our attention to another issue that you want to talk uh, more in your speech. That's very good how we deliver the speech. And I saw that you already implement some gesture and uh, focal variety that you, you make it so good, so beautiful, and we can understand in one sentence, you are so deeply sorry, you are so deeply sad, and other things, you are so happy to share your idea. So by using your vocal variety and your gesture, you want to emphasize not only the sentence of your speech, but also the idea, the genuine idea that you have in your heart, and you are the example of your speech. That's very good, and that's a way that we need to learn more from you, Lara. And then I see that I saw that you already implement all of the concept in the Toastmasters. I feel it's so hard to find what idea that I need to tell you about things that you need to improve. However, there are some specific things that I think all of us can improve our speech. Our speech. In your speech, you bring out the idea about environmental protection. However, we, our eye didn't notice what is the reason why we need to care about our environment. Perhaps you can elaborate the reason why we improve, why we need to care about environment. And the second thing, you can break down the idea, become several, only few examples, perhaps one or two that you want to strengthen more deeply about what we can do about the issue. And also I noticed you are really, are really hard about uh, pronunciate some specific term in environmental topic. Perhaps this issue is not your, uh, your educational background. So I think you need to find out how to pronounce some uh, terminology in the environmental issue. I think uh, that's all that I can share with you today. I believe that you already did very well and we learned so much from you, not only about your speech, but also about the topic that you bring to us. Back to you, Toastmasters. 
Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. I, I find I found out that you've got great talent in evaluating an informative speech or an inspirational speech to Lara. You got you bring out the strength and probably room for improvement suggestions toward her speech. That's magnificent. Thank you both to Jimmy and Lara. And ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to experience uh, the real speech craft session. There's one of the session we call it action plan. So right now, and uh, Jimmy is working with the speaker Lara. They will they will have in a short conversation. They will talk about their action plan to improve the speech and Lara's skills in speaking. So now it's highly recommended that everyone, if you can uh, put out the gallery mode, that so that you can see. Uh, Jimmy and Lara in the same time in the, on your screen. So it's on the upper right of your screen. There's a gallery mode with lots of grids. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, now back to Jimmy and Lara. You can do the action plan now. Thank you. All right, uh, Lara. I found out that you chose a very good topic that's already well done however i want to be uh, really know why the environmental protection is very important that's i didn't find in your beginning of your speech right you didn't mm -hmm. say why this issue is very important because you will deliver like a well-structured uh, speech so i think this is one thing that uh, you need to work out or i challenge mm -hmm. you to break down the reason why this issue is still important for us to talk about or to care about one or two reason because that's part of uh, the main or the structure of your speech and then the second thing we can move or you can uh, break down the from the main idea to several example uh, you already mentioned what you did but I cannot find the structure or the categories of what you did. You only uh, didn't bring, didn't buy drinks actively from the convenience store, or maybe you uh, bring your own tools, equipment for your food. But you can share to, or, or you break down your main idea, become clearly that doable that we can, that people or the audience can do that. So that's. Uh, that's the follow up about the why this issue is very important. And also the third thing that uh, I found out that some word in English that's uh, not very clearly spelled during your speech like for, but I, I heard that frog, something like that, because for is accompanied by spoon. So that's, and also the you mentioned, when you mention a name like Kiara, you put uh, the, the Kiara. So it should, it's supposed not to use the Kiara because Kiara is the name of the person. We don't use the. So that's about the English, but, and also, yeah, it's like straw, but if I didn't receive your script, mostly I, I miss the, some word that I cannot clearly understand. So that's about the spelling and some terminology in environmental issue that you need to learn because some people maybe they are so uh, familiar with the issue that you need to practice this word and then how to say it very clearly. So three things, basically, you need to work why this issue is very important because you will deliver the speech and the audience will follow. And then what we can do related to the why, what we can do, very simple, and you give your example, the way you do it. This already you did because you show how you do it, right? And then the, th the last thing is what we can do as an action plan, like to improve your uh, spelling about some specific word related to the environmental. I don't know whether you accept this challenge. <laughs> okay, Lara. Okay, thanks to me. So there are three points. I think this they are so good, they are so important. The first, I didn't mention why it is so important. Mm, that's my fault. I didn't I didn't point it out again. Cause I consider everyone could understand. 
so I didn't explain it. It's, it's no good. So I should at first to do the clarify first. Why this issue is important? So okay, and the second is main idea. I need to, uh, it's better for me to point out the main idea clearly since I mentioned too many ways to do that thing. If I can focus on one main point, that would be good for, uh, for audience to concentrate on that. Do I understand right? Is my understanding correct? Yeah, yeah. And the third one, find out some technology issue. Hmm. Yes, I didn't. Yes, I did. I didn't spend time on it. I should do that. And for the grammar is grammar error. Sorry, I didn't oh, notice okay. that. I will be careful <laughs> next time. Sorry, Kiera is a person. Not put the the in front of me. Kiera is our director, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks for your suggestion. Maybe next time you will listen this speech again in our Legion Club. Yeah, and as this project, uh, Aaron asked me to with you discuss in what time or the duration, how long that uh, we can work about this uh, this problem or this mm -hmm. topic. One week? So, do you think one week is it possible for you to elaborate your speech in one week? Sure, no problem. Okay. 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 So I will so see you in the next, next meeting. Yeah, next, next meeting. meeting. Next week. Next meeting. I need to prepare the other speech. Okay, I will prepare okay. too. <laughs> okay, this is a demo, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I will see you next week. That's. <laughs> okay. See you on six September. Six. Yes. Yes. Clearly. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, thank you, Jimmy and Laura, for your wonderful demonstration. See, everyone is a slightly different from our normal uh, evaluation session. It's about goal setting. It's about list out the points for improvement. And after this speech craft training, we'd like to see whether the speakers gained like really fundamental improved skills in their presentation. Now to the last minute of this demo session, I'd like to invite back uh, Aaron, uh, to uh, wrap up this demo session. Let's welcome again, Aaron. Aaron. Thank, thank you very much. So um, let's give a round of applause for our demo speaker, demo evaluator and our host. We, we're trying to give a very consolidated pack. So after they have finished the follow-up action plan, there will be some sort of like assignments to to decide who will lead uh, the, as a host for the next session. So this is usually like the entire role play of what you expect in a speech craft, just like a regular meeting, but just more practical in some way. Now I'm going to share finally the last bits whereby it's just some updates and also some some sort of like uh, the reason why I have so much passion for speech craft uh, is that the, the power of helping back people. Uh, I've been Toastmaster for 13 and a half years. Uh, I started from scratch, no mentors, no teachers, no one to talk to. <laughs> I, I was a very introvert person. I never know the powers of voice or connection at all. I have been building my skill set from scratch. But it was due to a story that motivates me to find a value in in everything that I do, even in speechcraft. So in my this picture itself, he actually held the meetings on a boat, on a on a ship for for volunteers who are dedicated to help people in Ghana. And this actually allows me to think about if you want to go for speech craft, you have the opportunity to, to experience yourself how to help people in need, how to help struggling clubs that you will find their shine in them. They may be experienced seasoned clubs for quite some time, but you want to give them more impact, more value. How do they sustain the clubs? You also can train your leadership skills communication skills, get to know new friends, get to understand what makes a club from a very great club. Suddenly they encounter so much problems and you become the ship doctor. 
you have the opportunity to explore and find meaningful goals and spacecraft is there. When you talk about gavel clubs, one of programs to help the kids, this is whereby we help people to become leaders too. And we also help to let you become that leader to solve this crisis. Now we have COVID-19 that affected lots of clubs. Membership has dropped a lot. You want to find these members back. You want to build that chemistry that you may have long lost. So grab your chance to be part of this spacecraft. Be the coordinator and we will guide you through the very end. So this is actually just like a here I'll go. If you're interested to be part of this team or even becoming a spacecraft coordinator, please copy your URL, print screen it, or even scan the QR code. And then unfortunately, you also see my contact details, which reveals my age. I'm so sorry. Now I'm getting older every day. <laughs> but most importantly, just feel free to join in and we will be there to help. Okay, uh, just give two more seconds and I move to the last one. Now, that's a slight timeline. Uh, if you want to register to become a spacecraft coordinator, please let us know. You also can become a spacecraft workshop speaker. If you're looking for opportunity to do your speeches, do workshops, this is also a place to go for. You also can become a mentor, advisor, and we will do a full set of training before you go to help a club that needs a spacecraft. We have an orientation session whereby you'll receive some materials for spacecraft, and we also make sure that you're well prepared Orientation session is just a welcoming session to let you meet different people who are interested in spacecraft. We also grind your skills. We have two workshop sessions that is dedicated to let you become the finest workshop coordinator out there for spacecraft. Finally, quote, we learn the best from enjoyment. For me, enjoying Toastmaster is the power of giving back. Helping clubs, making them smile, making them find a voice and their confidence within is my mission that I've stayed in Toastmaster for so many years. I'll pass the stage back to Albert to lead the Q&A session. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Aaron. I like your last quote. We learned the best on the enjoyment in Toastmasters. So due to a slightly time delay, uh, we like to have another three minutes of the Q&A session. I'm looking at the first question from Sandy. So to Aaron, how long is Speechcraft project and how long is each session? Uh, usually, this, usually the program, if you're all going to organize a spacecraft pro, uh, program itself, you determine the session. Usually on average is one and a half uh, month or two months. This is how on average it would go by. Every single session would be one and a half hours to two hours long. It's an intensive speech program whereby you will have the opportunity to hear from all speakers who are part of the speech crowd. If you have more people that doesn't have the opportunity to do the speeches, give them the opportunity that they have to go up to stage once. Yeah, so that's how we spend for two hours. Okay, thank you, Aaron. The next question is also from Sandy. What's the difference between mentor and mentee? And there's an advisor role in speech craft, like mentor, or can mentor also be the advisor? Aaron? No. Now, mentor itself is like every single speechcraft coordinator is just like you enter a new club. You have, you like, okay, I'm so lost. You have a mentor that's looking out for you. In speechcraft, you also have this mentor who is usually the club executives, uh, president, vice president of education, who will be guiding you through. It's helping new members or even helping seasoned Toastmasters who's getting to used to pathways itself. Now, now the difference is that uh, uh, between mentor and advisor is that advisor helps to guide the speech craft coordinator, keeping things all in control or leading it in a proper way. Mentor is more for members who are speakers. So that's the key difference between advisor and also the uh, mentor itself. Advisor has one more additional role. It helps to see the effectiveness of the whole speech craft session every time. Okay, we have another question coming in from our visitor. Well, bear with me if I pronounce it wrong. Ram Halai. His question is, is there a minimum or maximum number of members in a speech craft program? Uh, for this one, speech craft, it doesn't have a kind of like a maximum uh, number of people. Minimum, you do have to have uh, 
at least it doesn't have say that how much minimum, but we will highly recommend the minimum amount of people who are part of the speech club, maybe five to six people at the very least, so that they can really learn from it. Now, maximum wise, uh, it's just like a regular Toastmasters club. There's no maximum number, but you would you like to have a 200 Toastmaster member club? No, that's too much. So, so Speechcraft itself, to, from my experience uh, so far for the past four years to five years that I've been doing intensive Speechcraft training, I would suggest the number would be around like 20 to 30 on average. So that will actually make the maximum effect of it. Okay, 20 to 30 on average to most make the program more effective. Another question is, it is, is this a global program or just uh, District 67 local? Uh, well, Speechcraft is a global one, but I'm in charge of District 67 for Speechcraft. So my main focus is to help members in District 67. So, uh, but that is a global program. If you want to find uh, Speechcraft in your own district, feel free to explore the options with the district leaders that I'm sure that will be one. But in District 67 itself, uh, we will help to groom a new team of members who can be excellent Speechcraft coordinators. They can step up to become a Speechcraft chair next year. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Aaron, for your wonderful explanation and introduction of the speech prep program. Like someone like Mike and you is always we admire that uh, you lead us to uh, uh, let everyone know the best things about Toastmasters, especially like speech program. I believe you can help lots of people. Thank you once again, everyone. Let's give Aaron another round of applause. Thank you. Okay, now uh, I'd like to wrap up this training in three minutes of time. The next session, yes, you're seeing a, uh, a QR code right now and uh, we have events like this every two to three weeks. So please feel free to give us your feedback that can help us to improve in our next uh, training. Thank you. And the next, the next, I'd like to uh, thank for all the participants here today. We prepare a certificate. But the first one is to my humble self. I'd like to thank Simone especially every time to give me such a wonderful chance to polish my hosting skills. And it's a wonderful teamwork with everyone. The next, I'd like to thank especially our uh, team helpers. we got timer, photographer, and the slide master, uh, Richard Law, Clark, Peter, Jason, and Simone, of course, thank you for your efforts and help all the time to uh, help us organize uh, Pathway Online Training events. The next, I'd like to especially thanks to our speaker, Mike Honda. Mike, where are you? Can you open up your camera? Mike. Mike, can you open up your camera? I, yeah, I'm here. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Give us your best smile, Mike. Thank you, Mike, for your, uh, your wonderful workshop today. And yes, we'll, we'll, we'll enjoy YLP. We'll follow you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thank you, Mike. The next, I'd like to give uh, a certificate to another, another keynote speaker, Aaron. The next certificate. Uh, slide master yeah hi Aaron can you open up your camera we'll take a picture yep I'm here hey okay hi thank you Aaron once again for your detailed explanation of this speech craft program I believe everyone know what this is about and I believe lots of people were eager to join you thank you once again Aaron thank you okay thank you thank you once again everyone and uh, of course, our speaker, demo speaker here today, the most beautiful one, Lara. Lara, can you open up your camera? Hi, Lara, thank you once again. It's the best speech I've yeah. heard from you. And I'm glad that you're on international stage. Thank you once again, thank Lara. You. you give us a very demonstration of the speech. Thank you. Okay, the next, Jimmy Hussein, my good friend. Jimmy, can you open up your camera? Okay, hi, Jimmy. 
and the slide master should be uh yeah jimmy thank you for your effective really effective evaluation tour lara today and thank you for your help and you bring, you enlighten us with your feedbacks thank you thank you thank you thank you for the okay okay ladies and gentlemen i'd like to thank you once again to uh, attend this online pathway training and uh it's a it's a good thing to do i mean uh, to, to put everything online and from time to time we can learn together so please do follow us from the facebook we got a facebook uh group called pathway q a so simply search that facebook if you're not there and yeah follow us and to promote our next event oh now let's have a group photo first so everyone can you please turn on your video your camera and we take a group photo you can click the uh to into the gallery gallery mode okay photographer you ready yep hold on okay <clears throat> okay so oh my my video also okay okay all right so uh one two a uh, happy happy one two three yeah okay hold it one more yes okay the second page one two three yay okay one moment okay yep that's it thank you okay thank you simon thank you everyone once again and to remind you the next uh, event will be september 5th we invite a uh, heavyweight speaker mark snow dtm from australia to give us his topic how to take your pathway journey to new height so once again i'd like to thank you for all for your participation i'd like to thank aaron mike and uh, lara and all the helpers thank you Thank you. We, we keep on bringing the best news of Toastmaster to everyone. Thank you once again. Goodbye. Goodbye. And if you're interested in joining the